Uh, Father, that Holy Spirit, I ask that you, your word reveal Christ to your children, to your people, sons and daughters. Lord, hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, I ask that you think through, through my mind and speak through my mouth. Let the words go forth, not in my own human understanding, but in the power of your spirit, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> okay, understanding the name, meaning of Jehovah Nisi. So we have done uh, El Elohim, El Shaddai, El Elyon. Okay, anyone remember El Elyon means what? Possessor of heaven and earth. No, that one is like one of the characteristics of El Elyon. <laughs> El Elyon means El Elyon. That is the characteristic attached to El Elyon. El Elyon. Huh? Why, Why I ask? I because ask I noticed notice you all don't go. Okay, and somebody's uh, this one. So that's why I remember us again. The meaning of El Elyon. The Most High God. Uh, who is that? Me, Rebecca. Yeah, correct. It's the Most High God. Okay, El is God. Elyon is the Most High. That means the Most High, the highest already. There's no other God higher than God, than our Jehovah, than our Yahweh. Okay, he's the highest. His name is the highest. That's why every other name has to submit to the name of Jesus. He has the highest name in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. He's the highest. It's like in a co corporation, right? You say, the highest one make all the decisions. Then you say, I don't want to see the general manager. I don't want to see the CEO. I want to see what's, who's the highest, the owner. <laughs> the owner is the highest all right if they have a very serious uh you know uh, complaint or whatever they want to go to the highest who can take the make the decision that will stand so most high means he makes the he has the final say he has the authority to whether to grant you your request yes or no or to do something about something God as the most high God has the final say. All right. And his characteristic there, revelation of the most high God is possessor of heaven and earth. That's why he's the owner. He's the highest one because he owns everything. So in your company, who is the highest? All right. If you want to uh, go and see the highest or you just want to go see the middleman. Because the middleman sometimes is wasting time, right? <laughs> you, yeah. Okay, okay. He promised you something. And then next day he said, why not implement it? Uh, actually, I went to the owner. The owner said, cannot. Hi, yeah. Then might as well go straight to the owner. <laughs> so, go straight to the Most High. Whatever he says, he has the power and authority to do what he says. All right? So, all his promises, he is the highest already. No need to go appeal to anyone higher than Yahweh or Jesus. All right? That's how a revelation of the Most High God. So each name reveals something that ought to have an impact in your life. Okay, Most High God as possessor of heaven and earth. Why I worry anymore about finances or tithing and offering and all that? Because he's the Most High God. He is the owner already. And I bring my whatever I need before him and he what, you hear what he said. So he has the final say. He said, I will take care of your needs. I will open the windows of heaven for you. So he is the most high God. He has the final say. It's up to us whether to believe or not to believe or to trust or not to trust and to do what he says. Because if we do what he says, then we will have the result of what he says the results will be in that obedience to the most high God who it has become our Abba Father. So a son's request, the father will not refuse. So those are the revelations of why we are studying all these names of God, right, in the Hebrew. So today is Jehovah Nisi, all right? Okay, let's look at this Jehovah Nisi. 
what does it mean? Okay, first, the how the how this name came about. All right, Jehovah Nisi. Exodus, it starts in Exodus 17, 8 to 14. Now, Amalek came and fought with Israel. So that those times, uh, this one is still, they have just come out from Egypt, the, the Israelites, they haven't gone into the promised land yet. But in Egypt, uh, uh, coming out into the wilderness, okay? So the, the enemy there, uh, Amalek, came and fought with Israel in Rapidim. And Moses said to uh, Joshua, so all in the wilderness, uh, choose us some men and go out and fight with Amalek. So there is a battle. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held out his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. So this is very interesting to study the, the battles and the wars of the Israelites and the enemies, right? All supernatural. That's why we, this year, our what God has for us is a year of glorious victory and great rejoicing. Why? Because it's a, not a victory. A victory means there is a battle. All right. So today is not the physical war. You go out to the soldier, you know, and fight another soldier or another uh, nation. All right. In the in the believers, it is your fight against your flesh. Ah, your greatest enemy, right? And all those wrong thinking, so that we can have victory. All right. So there is a a fight. Moses held up his hand. So in this particular war or battle, Moses would hold up his hand. And when he put up his hand, then they will, the, the Israel will win. When he let down, then the enemy will win. Moses' hand. So it's also a revelation of God's hand. All right. Moses' hands became heavy. But Moses' hands became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. And Aaron and her supported his hands, one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So this is a, a, a revelation into the two sides, right hand and left hand, right? One side means the right hand and the second is the left hand. So it relates to God, okay? So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to, so who win? Who won this battle between Israel and Amalek? The Amalekites. It's Israel, right? All right, under the leadership of Joshua, who is the army general, and Moses, their spiritual leader. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial to, in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua. Joshua was the general. Remember, Moses is the servant of God, right? That hears from God. Uh, from God, that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar. So all the time in the Jewish uh, uh, happenings, each time they win a war, they will build an altar. Altar is a place of sacrifice of thanksgiving and worship. That's why in other in religions, you they build an altar. All right, a place where you bring a sacrifice of uh, worship. That means this. You worship this particular God. So that's called an altar. So who was the one who saved them or gave them the victory was the God of Moses, all right, or Jehovah. So they, Moses built an altar and he called it Jehovah Nisi, or the Lord is my banner. So we went through a bit of Jehovah previously. Uh, Jehovah is Yahweh, yud he vav he right, which is the hand of God, the little that holds a lot. All right, the fiery hand of God and with the breath of God, the spirit of God, the two hey, to behold God's power and also God's love. Behold the hand and behold the, the cross. All right, the amazing love of God. That's why we have Abba Father there, the love of unconditional love of God. So if we cannot see these two things, then our, our Christian life or what will be one of constant defeat and depression because we cannot see the power of God in his hand. Right, that he's the highest. 
is the most powerful. The hand of God is powerful. And then we cannot see the love of God. <laughs> that God loved you so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross. Therefore, if we cannot see these two things spiritually, our life will always be full of fear, full of insecurity, right? looking for love in man when we, 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 need, we just need to love, to, live, uh, to, to experience his love then we won't have to look for love in a man or a woman anymore, right? That our security is in him. That's why I said, behold the hand, behold the nail. That is Yahweh. See again the cross. Go to the cross. See the cross. See, see, see until I don't need any other man or woman to love me because I know the love of the Father, the love of Jesus is complete. Okay, but we can continue, of course, with you know, have a uh, loving man and woman, all that. That's fine, but they are not our life. <laughs> your husband is not your life, your wife is not the one who died for you. Okay, I re uh, remember that always, right? Because they are still human beings who can fail and they can never love you the way Abba loves you, the way Jesus loves you. That's why, behold the hand. Behold the nail, right? And then your life will be supernatural. The Lord, so that after winning that battle, he says, Moses put an altar and he called that place of worship, place where he honored God for the victory, Jehovah Nisi. So what is the meaning? It means the Lord is my banner. Okay, so remember today we are not going to a physical war, right? But we are facing war almost every day, battle. <laughs> battle of the mind, battle of the emotions, battle of the senses, battle of ourselves. In between, three voices talking, <laughs> three parties, right? <laughs> Fighting all the time. Or do this, do that, or what? Worry or not worry, or do, want to meditate, work God's word or not meditate, want to do this or do that. So everything, every day is like a war. But how are you going to win the war? All right, win over the flesh that we can continue in our purpose of life of serving the Lord. Okay, so Nisi, so you see there, Yud, He, Vav, He. All right, behold the powerful hand of God and behold the nail, which is the love of Jesus, the love of God. And then you have the Nun, the Samak, and the Yud again, Nisi. He is my, Jehovah is my banner. Okay, so let's see what is that meaning. Banner or nisi comes from the word nes, all right, which is a noon and a samet. It means a flag, all right, or a sail, a signal, a standard. So God is your, or rather, yud he -te Yahweh is your flag. So what is the meaning or the flag stuff or a sign or a standard? And it also means to be lifted up or displayed, all right? To gleam from afar. It means how many of you have seen the flag that is uh, three feet tall? <laughs> Don't have, right? All the flags are fl flown high, right? Everyone can see the flag. Okay, so only when a set did somebody die, then only they fly the flag half mass or something like that. But then, in other times, it's a flag. And then, especially when there's a victory, today we know the color of the flag. So victory is what color? <laughs> what flag you wave? When you win the war already. <laughs> when you surrender, it's white flag, isn't it? White, white. Yeah. white flag is surrender. No, that one lose already. <laughs> Yala, white flag is surrendering, lose. Red. Red, yeah. Red flag, okay, win already. So same, right? When God put the, the red, symbolize the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus won over the devil. That's why they put the blood over the, the door. All right? And Chinese New Year is coming soon. Uh, just around the corner, you will see people putting the red cloth over the head, over, the, over their, uh, the, the door. Symbolizing, again, the, how the Jews... Uh, God told them to put the blood of the lamb and put it above over the door, right? To bring to the, the Chinese is bring good luck and to turn away all the bad luck, right? But actually, it comes from the Bible. It's from Jesus. 
right, blood that was shed for us, that when we go under the blood, it's like a banner, the blood of Jesus, right, over us, right, that the, the, the death angel was going to pass through and they see that flag of the blood of Jesus, which Jesus had won. That's why when Jesus went to the cross, it was a victory over the devil, yeah, by his blood. That is the sinless blood that was shed to redeem man. So it was meant to be displayed. Okay, that's why you put it up. So everyone can see. Everyone can see this house is protected. All right. So in the spirit, all right, but in the uh, Israelite time, right, they had to put the blood at the, the doorpost. So it's supposed to be conspicuous, a flag as fluttering in the wind to raise a beacon and lift up as a standard bearer. All right, the banners is with the gimel invite to look, to behold. So when you see a flag, when you pass by and you see a flag, normally you will look up and look at the flag because it is flying a high, right? It, it brings attention, all right? And it speaks a message of victory, all right? That even a country has a flag means they are independent. If they fly the flag of their, their you know, uh, they don't have their own flag, they are not independent. There's no victory. They are still under another country. But when they are able to fly their own flag, it means they have, they have won, all right? They have their own independence. So it's something to behold, the banner. So the Lord is our banner, is to behold him, to raise a flag again, to flaunt, all right? The word there, banner is to flaunt, you know, to flaunt <laughs> the word, okay? Show off. <laughs> this is a good show off. That's flaunt. So people say, if you have it, flaunt it. <laughs> Don't have That's a different thing. That means show it off. Okay, so we are not to show off our pride or the things that we have done in our own achievement, but we, want, we are showing off what God has done, what he has done for our lives. All right, flaunt it. So it's like a banner. Show it off. Let it fly. Raise the flag. Right today, our, uh, th this year, is about rising up, rising up, rising up, okay? Up, up, not down. No more depressed and down. Up, lift up your heads, okay? Raise up the flag, be conspicuous. So how does it, what, how does this, the Lord is my banner or my flag, okay? Mean in our everyday life. Song of songs. <clears throat> I am truly his rose, the very theme of his song. I'm ever shadowed by his love. Like a lily growing in the valley. Yes, you are my darling companion. Okay, the book of Song of Songs is written by King Solomon. All right. And, but it's a picture of uh, for him, the king and his lover in the Bible. But it speaks to always all the Old Testament, every, in fact, the whole Bible. Repres uh, always speaks of Jesus and his bride, all right? And we are the lovers of Jesus. So it's Jesus talking to his bride, which is you and me. So like a lily growing in the valley, and you are my darling companion. You stand up from all the rest, from through the thorns around you, you remain as pure as a lily more than others. <clears throat> that is the as the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow. This is the Shumanite woman or the lover of Solomon or us as the bride talking to our lover, Jesus. I sat down under his shadow and gave great delight with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Okay. Now we're going to the, so you have a sitting down. Today we are sitting down, but you sit down. Normally, you, you, if it's very hot, you sit down under a tree, under something that can give you a covering or a, a shadow. A shadow is cooling, right? So if when we went to the beach, right, so hot, we'll find someone that we can go under, got shadow, one big, big person, and then we stand under that shadow. It will be cooling, right? So who is this? the one who shadow us, all right? We learn in all those El Shaddai and all that also. He is our mighty shade. He brought me to the 
banqueting house and his banner over me was love. So this uh, is in the original Hebrew. And then he has the word, his banner, which is the one that Moses said, the Lord is my banner. So what does this word, it's the same word in Hebrew. What does this banner mean? Right? He brought me to the banqueting house. So I'd like to ask everyone here. So even though we are at Zoom, you can unmute and answer, except for uh, Hannah, because she did do the slides. Or if you have seen the slides, then you don't answer. He brought me to the banqueting house. So what do you think is a, the meaning of banqueting house? So the, your lover, Jesus, is bringing us to his banqueting house. <laughs> when you hear the word banquet, what do you think of? Oh, I think of eating. Uh. <laughs> okay. It's like want to go for a banquet, right? Go makan, makan, makan. Uh. The house of a lot of food, like uh, Elijah and Abigail's house. Okay, so when you go to this banqueting house, Jesus brings us to this banqueting house. And then he cover us on the banner. There's a big banner flying, right? So uh, Elsa do banners, right? Again, when you want to advertise your company or what, you do a banner, a big one. It's a banner over me, all right? Over the bride of Christ or the lover of Jesus is love. So let's look a bit first at what is banqueting. Banqueting in the Hebrew that has been translated as banqueting <laughs> is yayin. So Abigail knows what's yayin already, right? You do that uh, wine. Yayin has been translated banqueting. But El that's why sometimes we miss the real meaning when we don't understand the original. It's good to go into the concordance and find out. So it means to effervesce or wine as fermented. All right, so Abigail do the fermented yin or wine for the communion. Intoxication, wine. In Hebrew, the banqueting house is the house of wine, not the, I forgot really what does, uh, 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 the wife serve the fermented wine, the husband serve what wine? <laughs> Halwa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so okay. Remember, we are in the house of wine. <laughs> Less halwa and more spiritual wine. That is intoxicating. Okay. So, what is this wine that we drink in the house that God, our Jesus, our lover, is serving us? Most of you has been drinking every Sunday to effervesce bubbles in a liquid the effervescence in, in, in the dictionary it means uh, of sparkling wine so it's wine effervescence sparkle bubble vivacity and enthusiasm he was filled with such effervescence so when you drink this wine you get a bit drunk <laughs> and then you are filled with enthusiasm you bubble right with vivacity right before that okay so today we have the new wine, the wine of the spirit. When we come into the presence, the banqueting house, when we come to worship the Lord, when we come into his presence, what is supposed to be doing? God is supposed to be, or what does God want to serve you with? Wine. <laughs> God wants to serve you with wine. In his house, it's a banqueting house. That is the presence of God. That's why in the presence of God is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forever more. Can we imagine God's house? We go there and then we feel depressed all the time. <laughs> Everybody's face very long. No, God's house is a banqueting house. House filled of but spirit, not the not the pub type of wine, okay? <laughs> not, a, okay? not a physical one because it's a spiritual house, all right? So it doesn't mean it have to be a church building, okay? That's why it can be any home or place that two or three meet together. And when we are in his presence, he serves us wine, spiritual wine. That's where on the day of Pentecost, right? 
Acts chapter 1, verse uh, chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came, we filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were like drunk. The people who, who were not filled, they were observing, they said, what, these people are like drunk. All right? And Paul says, uh, Peter says that it's, three, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. They cannot be drunk. But this is what has happened according to Joel. Or, or jo Joel, all right? The, the prophet Joel that says that this is the last days where God will pour out his spirit on his sons and daughters and they shall prophesy and they shall dream dreams and see visions. This is the new wine that is intoxicating, that people laugh while you are filled with the presence of God. And many say, oh, I don't know what it is. It is the house of wine. Okay, where people with all the depression come in and then they laugh. You know, a drunk person in the um, natural, that's why people drink, right? Because they got a lot of problems. And then when they get intoxicated, they don't they forget the problems, but it's only momentarily. And then they start to laugh, they start to talk nonsense, they behave, you know. We, they're very happy. Eh? You look, you go to the pub, the people who are drinking, are they happy or sad? Physically, they're very happy, right? <laughs> they drink, they're happy. Oh, another cup, another cup, another whatever, right? So the real, this is the imitation. This is the, the physical, right? Uh, corrupted by sin. But the one that is pure and holy is the presence of God. Imagine how many times you have been to church and you have never experienced this banqueting house. It is supposed to be the house of God like that one. So if there is a church, right? And you just go in, go out, go in, go out and feel more miserable than before, then you have missed the banqueting house. This is the real thing. And this is in the book of Acts, right? Where people go in, they may be depressed, may have a lot of problems, but God takes the burden like Magdalene, right? Under the anointing, the Holy Spirit removed her burdens from off her shoulder. And from that day, in the first Holy Spirit power feast, where she experienced the Holy Spirit, yeah, her burdens lifted and it was moving. And today she is a very different person. Okay, doesn't mean there's no more problems or no more happenings in the world. But her heart, her cares are all gone. Put on Jesus and able to face every day by day. Jesus didn't say face all tomorrow's problem today. All right, day by day. So how does God give us the supernatural strength? Through the drinking of the wine, the smuggling wine of the spirit, the new wine, which is given by or served by the Holy Spirit to his children. All right, for a purpose. And the healing Healing can be healing of the physical body. Healing can be healing of the mind. Healing of the emotions. Yeah, There's so our whole uh, spirit, soul, and body need the healing. Spirit done already. So the soul area, the thoughts, thinking, and also which affect our emotions. All right. So no need to go through a, 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 a what do you call it? Those uh, counseling sessions of ten hours. <laughs> why you're so depressed go back to day one when you were born you know how your uh, so and so treated you okay forgive this forgive no under the anointing pop, half an hour counting <laughs> because that's God you pay well pay the supernatural hand of God if God cannot do that then he cannot be God already right that's why he's able through Jesus Christ now especially Right, to remove all those things that have been clinging to us, those fears, those worries, those insecurities, those, yeah, and take it out from our spirit. But then sometimes, why is it, oh, after I went to the banqueting house, I got anointed, uh, anointing, I feel so good. And then after about 10 days later, I feel down again. Why? <laughs> because of the mind. <laughs> the spirit already, you know, operated on. By the Holy Spirit, but the mind think back again on the wrong thinking. That's why we are spirit, soul, and body. We keep need to keep renewing the mind, building the spirit man, keep meditating on the word of God, all right, about who we are in Christ and who Christ is, and keep going and drink more wine. 
at the same time. Okay, so banner is the same word here. Okay, to show you that it is a flag race. All right, exalting Christ. Stay with me, flagons. Comfort me with apples, for I'm sick of love. I'm love sick. Okay, in other words, this is the old King James version. So, what is the word flagons? Stay with me, flagons. Okay, stay is samak. All right, those of you who are in, uh, have a roughly a little understanding of the Hebrew letters. All right, Sama is surround, support. So stay with Jesus. He is the one who support you. He is the one who is holding you. Ah, don't come out from that. He's holding you. Rest upon him. Lean on him. Lean on Jesus. Okay? <clears throat> he will sustain you. <clears throat> So he is your support. Stay, stay, stay with him. You can lean on him. That's why John was able to lean on the bosom of Jesus. If you want to lean on anything, lean on him. All right, which is he, Christ and his word. Take his word and say, Lord, you say you will never leave me nor forsake me. I lean on this promise that, Lord, you will see me through all the problems of life. I lean on your support. I lean on when I have given unto you, you will continue to bless me even more than I can contain. Lean on that. Lean on that. He is your support. All right. So, flagon is a raisin cake, <laughs> the fruit cake <laughs> made by Abigail and uh, Elijah. Okay. So, they, this couple produce a lot of uh, <laughs> spirit. <laughs> Okay, so they put the spirit inside the fruit cake, right? So this is the flagon. Okay, in the Hebrew, it is the raising cake used in sacrificial feasts. So drink of the new wine, intoxicating the wine of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the anointing, and eat the cake, <laughs> the raising cake. The feast, all right, is also a flagon of wine. So that's why that cake got put wine inside. All right, raisin is made from grape, right? And grape is how where wine comes from. Again, it tells how do we actually enter the banqueting house? How do we stay under this banner? Is keep on feasting and drinking the wine of the Holy Spirit. They are complete. Closely pressed together, like a cake of raisins. <laughs> like one. Pressed together. Right? <clears throat> and Jesus was also pressed together, right? He suffered for us. So that's why out comes new life for us today. That pressing down is the foundation. Jesus already done what needed to be done for us to live under the banner of God. Jehovah Nisi, under his, actually, he was pressed, he was, he suffered so that we can receive that kind of love and to be protected always living under his banner of love. Jehovah Nisi is a banner of Ahava's love. His left hand is under my head, his right hand doth embrace me. So, about the left hand and the right hand, just now we read also. Length of days in Proverbs 3, 36. Length of days is in her right hand. That's what it's talking about, wisdom. The wisdom of God. So, King Solomon, who wrote all this with the, the wisest man on earth, right? With the wisdom of that time. Today, of course, it's Jesus. He talks about the left hand and the right hand, about wisdom. Length of days. If you have wisdom, you will live long, good, healthy life. All right, today. And it's his left hand in the other side, the hand, her left hand, wisdom's left hand is riches and honor. Yeah, you will never lack. You will live in riches. So it needs what? Wisdom. It's not that God don't want to bless us. But are we following the wisdom of God or the wisdom of our world on our own? The wisdom of the world is save, 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 <laughs> save every cent and every dollar. <laughs> then you find that inflation comes and then every time you save, we feel that it's always not enough <laughs> and you are miserable. 
But what is the wisdom of God? Give, 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 give. <laughs> it's opposite. And then it says, you give and you give and more will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will man put into your bosom. So you look at the Bible, it's different. It didn't say save, 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 and then you will have more. It says give, 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 and then more will be put into your bosom. It's God's wisdom, right? So if we follow the wisdom of God, we will have long life, good, healthy life, and long, and then we have riches, and we have honor. What's honor? Yeah, respect, glory, right? This is the glorious blessings of God in the wisdom, in the right hand and left hand of wisdom of Christ, actually, or of God. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Can you see that? The right hand, the powerful hand of God, yeah? In his presence is that fullness of joy so drink and rejoice and let that joy fill you when we come so we're going to have every sunday we have the physical meeting all right that you can receive more and more of that wine the house the banqueting house and pleasures pleasures that will manifest first in the spiritual and will manifest in your life you will receive promotion you can receive all the blessings that come in comes from first in the spirit, in the right hand and left hand, because we are seated in the right hand of the Father with Jesus. Promise me, Jerusalem maidens, by the gentle gazels and delicate deer, you will not disturb my love until she is ready to arise. See, God is also good, right? He prepare his church to arise, his people to get up, all right? Get up. Listen, I hear my lover's voice. I know it's coming. It's him coming to me. Can you hear your lover's voice? <laughs> not your husband, not your wife, <laughs> okay? Not your boyfriend, not your girlfriend. Jesus, our lover's voice, coming to me, leaping with joy over mountains, skipping in love over the hills that separate us to come to me. Jesus is coming to you, Xiaoling. Yeah? You may not know him very well yet because you just born again, right? But he is coming over the mountains, over the hills, over all any obstacles you may think is too big for God. But God is Yahweh. He is the one who is raised up. Yeah, he died, remember? And he won, defeated the devil and he rose again on the third day lifted up the, the children of Israel while they were in the wilderness. They were told, so Moses was told to build a pole and then the serpent was there and they look up. What is that judgment? The devil is judged and therefore, because the devil is judged, defeated by Jesus at the cross, today we look at Jesus, we can receive all the blessings that belong to us. Right? He is coming. He is no matter what is trying to separate you and God, it cannot, all right? Because Jesus is coming to you. Let me describe him. He is graceful as a gazelle, swift as a wild stag. Now he comes closer even to the places where I hide, all right? In Psalms, it also says that you may run anywhere and hide from him. But how can we hide? God is omnipresent is everywhere we can't hide from him he knows huh? where Elsa go hide <laughs> and then he take Elsa out <laughs> come into his presence don't hide because in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand pleasures forevermore he gazes into my soul peering through the portal as he blossoms within my heart right Jesus is going to blossom in your heart and you are going to blossom with him so he doesn't blossom anywhere else in your heart. That's why we built, we are here, it's called the hidden man, developing the hidden man of the heart. It is where God blossoms, Jesus blossoms, it is where his word will blossom. As we feed his word, his word will glow and Jesus become our lover, bigger and bigger, clearer and clearer. Where? In our heart, not somewhere out there. In our heart is where he will blossom, our lover will blossom when we put his word in our heart so it's not a feeling kind of relationship oh today jesus i feel you love me oh all the goose peoples 
or goosebumps. And then tomorrow, I don't feel that you love me anymore. <laughs> no, when his word is inside your heart, it's not about feelings. It's about knowing. I know he loves me. I know he can never fail me. I know he will see me through. I know I won the victory. I know this battle is the Lord's. I know he has caught me. I know he has destined me. I know he loves me. I know it's not I feel. I know. That's why it, Paul says in Philippians 3.10 that I may know him. It's about knowing him. All right? At whom who knows you true and true and allowing him to blossom in your heart, allowing the word to grow when you meditate on his word. Is his word growing inside your heart or is it just memorizing from the head? Okay, there, there he stands behind our wall. That is the commentary. Fear and religious duty will always have a wall to hide behind. The contrast is striking. All right. So if we live in fear, then we our religion, see Christianity as a religion, we will always want to hide because religion always point at you, point at your, your weakness, point at your fault, point at your sin. And we keep looking at ourselves. That's religion, trying to be better, trying to be a better, <laughs> better person. Okay. So that's religion. But Christianity is Jesus, our lover, the one who died for us. He is coming. That, that, that is, we don't want to hide anymore. Right? Religion, we are so fearful that we are doing wrong. We are fearful of being corrected. We are fearful of being found out that we got this weakness. We are fearful of people know us that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how to do this. That is religion. The religion is the, the part of you that feels not good enough. That's why Romans 8.15 says, right? He's not given me the spirit of fear or bondage to go back into religious duty, but of love, right? Where we can have this, where, where from our spirit, the freedom to call God Abba Father. Because when you know Abba's love or Father's love, there is no more fear. No more fear of what people think of you. And, oh, you know, you know, people think, why people grow up? inferior with inferiority with uh, uh insecurity it's because when they were young right all these people whether their parents or whoever tell them you cannot study one they are no good one so in order to hide all their in, in insecurities they withdraw towards themselves and they grow up feeling never good enough scared of what people think scared of another person saying hey you didn't do well uh, today you fail again uh. when when we come to abba's love that's why in, that's in romans 18 what happened all these fears disappear because we call god abba there is one who loves you and he will never condemn you and he will never judge you so it frees you from the fear of what people say about you that's what the devil wants to hold you down. The contrast is striking. You don't have to hide behind a wall. A wall is like a mask that we put up so that because you have been hurt, you have don't know this love between the real love between God and you. You have been hurt by man. You have been hurt by words. What happened? You put a wall. So I'm sure everyone knows this. Wow, that person uh, has got a wall. Cannot go through one. You talk. They, they talk to you, but you cannot go to their heart. Right? It's just, there's a strong wall there. They will, they will not open up, let the wall down because it's, they built their own wall to protect themselves. And they're always in the trying mode of being bad, good person, all right? being, you know, somebody. In case people know that deep inside, they are actually very fearful. They're actually very insecure. But the wonderful thing is, our Savior knows all that. And He has already, He comes in, right, to take out all these things. That is why the gospel is the revelation of His righteousness that will remove all this from our lives. We don't have to hide from someone who created us and already know us true and true. We don't need to have that fear anymore. He is free. He's free and leaping over the mountains 
but the Shulamite was enclosed and restricted behind a wall. Yeah, in a love relationship. Okay, this is the purest, most beautiful love relationship. You don't have to hide. You don't have to hide, you know. Oh, okay. If you, someone say, Ah, yeah, you don't know how to do this, then what do we say? Normally, we would say, No, la, I did. I, I know how to do. No, no need to defend. Yeah, la, yeah, I didn't know how to do. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Show me. Okay. That is a person who is free already, you know, that we are no more hiding and scared of what we are not good enough. Always having this, I'm not good enough. Actually, at the, you know, the bottom of it all is the feeling of not good enough. Once you let the, the, the Jesus come in, the Holy Spirit come in, the word of God come into our hearts, we are free. You'll be really what you mean by whom the sun sets free is free. It's says free from our own self. Sometimes people never dare to do something that they haven't done before, like go preach the gospel. It's because they are scared. <laughs> scared of what? Actually, it's scared of themselves not being able to do it and then others when they say you cannot do it. The fear of not being good enough. That's why they're not attempt to do something. What if I pray for someone, the person didn't get healed? It's still a self-centered thing. If they didn't get healed, it's not me who healed. So the focus the devil put on us is to focus on ourselves. And we need to get rid of that by coming to Jesus and know that he's the one who healed. So if the person didn't heal, it's not you. If, it, if he is the one that we are preaching him, if the person reject you, is rejecting him. So you know why people dare not do? It's because of that insecurity and the fear of not good enough. And when we let the love of Jesus, that's the banner. Yeah, he put the Lord is my, he's your victory, not you are your victory. He is your victory. He is your banner and it's a banner of love. If the person, if it's not, didn't heal, didn't get healed. God doesn't condemn you and say, hey, you see, you cannot heal. No. He says, carry on, continue to do my work. Yeah. Don't be restricted behind a wall. The one I love calls to me, arise. Jesus called us to arise. Yeah. His beloved is to get up, arise with the wonderful words, my dearest. It's not the school teacher scold you. Get up, you lazy bone. <laughs> it's not that one. It's arise, my dearest. He loves you. Hurry. Run. Hurry, my darling. <laughs> this is the TPT version. Come away with me. That's why I encourage you all to have, go away with the Lord with devotion. Right? Take your time with him. Spend some time with him. He tells you, he calls you not to scold you. He calls you to want to talk to you. He wants to put his love, show you, his, shower you with his love, with his peace, with his goodness. Arise. But the thing is, he has to get our attention. <laughs> okay? I've come as you have asked to have you as you have asked to draw you to my heart and lead you out. Where is he taking you? Not to the shopping mall, not to the park, to his heart. <laughs> to his heart. The best place in the world to commune with God is not Singapore, Malaysia, or whatever. It is in his heart. Go to him, all right? And he, when we commune with him, heart to heart, he will take us out into the world and face this world the way Jesus faced the world as the son of almighty God. He had no fear in him when he faced the world, when he faced his enemies who were going to take him to the cross. All of us will be peeing in the pants, right? <laughs> but... Jesus had no fear because perfect love casts out fear. He was living under the banner of Jehovah Nisi, which is the perfect love of his father. 
he knows that the father will is the best for him and the father will see him through the father's love cuts out all fear he was in the heart now is the time my beautiful one that's how god sees us the hebrew word for arise or kun was used by the high priest when he spoke to the levites to take up the ark of glory the ark of covenant on their shoulders to move it as israel journeyed through the wilderness the ark can be a metaphor for the bride carried on the shoulders of our bridegroom he wants to carry you will you let him carry you letting him carry means lord jesus i acknowledge you you are the only one who have the ability and the power to remove all my stress to heal my life and to restore my life and carry me that's why again Mark, uh, matthew eleven twenty eight, i will carry you come and learn the unforced rhythms of grace Will, he, will you let him carry you or will we carry all the burdens ourselves? Throw your worries, your cares upon him. That is how he carry you. Arise. We rise up to listen to him. Kum, okay? To stand up. It's a, a lot of words there for one uh, powerful word called kum or to rise up. That means that it is it's so meaningful and so powerful. Or how God wants us to rise up. Isaiah 60, right? Rise up. Why we can now rise up and no more. You know, a person who cannot rise up is one who is in depression. One who has failed. One who, has, who is defeated. Who is full of shame. A shame, right? It's, they always bow down. Jesus, because he has defeated the enemy, he has become our savior. He says, now I will carry your burdens. Now I will carry you also, Elsa. <laughs> I'll carry you. Right? I'll carry each one of you. Right? So rise up. When we rise up in the spirit, as it will change our whole countenance. Right? It's telling God, I let you carry me. When we still go in our, go down, depressed, it's saying, I want to carry my own burden. Uh, there's also a rising up of faith, okay? That we are trusting in Him to take us, to carry us, and not ourselves. The season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter. When we rise up, then only we can heal properly, right? <laughs> if you are always down like that, right? The hair cover all, 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 all your ears, everything. Then we cannot hear anything. We're always depressed, then we cannot hear God. But we say, Lord, I want to hear you. I'll get up and hear properly. I come to you. And what does he, what does he our Savior, our lover, wants to tell us? He tells us the season has changed because you have Jesus now as your lover. The season has changed because he is Jehovah Nisi. The bondage of your barren winter has ended. Have any one of you heard this from the Lord? The, and the season of hiding is over and gone. Will you hear this from our Lord Jesus? If you have not heard it before or you heard it but never gone into your heart or your spirit, hear it this morning as I speak these words of the Lord to your heart. Jesus said, the season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter has ended, selling, and the season of hiding is over and gone. No more hiding, no more running. The rains have soaked the earth. And what it says in the, in the commentary, the rains speak of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. She is refreshed and prepared to move out. Move out of the wall. Move out of the hiding. Why we hide? Why we hide? Why do you all hide? Because you feel you're not good enough, right? Ah, that's why we hide. When somebody said, who oh, volunteer to do anything? He said, go oh, quickly, go hide, go toilet <laughs> and hide, right? Because you feel you are not good enough. You cannot do that thing that what that uh, someone is calling for. You go hide, right? When you always hide, just all you have seen, you've done wrong, right? That's why Adam hide, right? Adam and Eve hide after they sin, they disobey God, they hide. But now, Jesus, 
because of Jesus, we can come out from hiding. We can come out from our insecurities and our fear of not good enough. It speaks of the now Jesus had come, the Holy Spirit has been poured out and we have been refreshed. Elsa don't need to hide anything. <laughs> all the insecurities are all taken over by Jesus. And the Holy Spirit was poured upon everyone on the day of Pentecost. And every time, every day, we are together prepared now. He prepares you to move out of hiding. Why? Hiding, there's no flag, right? Nobody see you. You are hide. But when the flag is flown high, everyone can see you know what God is doing in PFA. He's going to fly you all high. Display the glory of the transformation that he has done, begun and continue to do until it's finished. Until he display you out for the world to see this is the new Sarah. This is the new Xiaoling. This is the new Rebecca. This is the new Hannah. This is the new Abigail. This is the one who have been drinking my wine, who have come to sup with me in my heart, fellowship in his heart, and who has been refreshed. The world will see you just like he showed Israel to the world, to his enemies. And you see, 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 I am the God of Israel. Can you all defeat Israel? Cannot. Supernatural God is behind that. Can, can the devil defeat Elijah? No, cannot. God, come out from hiding, okay? <laughs> he will display you his power, not your own. When you remove all your insecurities and all that fear, knowing that he is your banner. All right, then he will fly you high. He will fly Rebecca high, Ching Lan high, everyone here, Magdalene, Evelyn Gold, Sarah, all fly high because it's his handiwork. It's his work. He did it, not you did it, not I did it my way, but he did it his way. Jesus dying on the cross and redeeming us. And now you are refreshed. Now you can move up alone. No, with him, Elijah, when you go out and share the gospel, you are not alone. You are three people with you. Father God, the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is with you. Why so scared? Okay, come out from hiding. Hallelujah. Amen. You, will, you are prepared. You are refreshed and prepared to move out with him. And left it bright with blossoming flowers. A new season, winter of cold and defeat. All right, everything not growing, nothing blossoming, right? Winter is a time when the plants are not growing, right? But are not blossoming. But now it says a new season, the winter, the, the days of those coldness, troubles, fears of hiding. Winter is when all the animals go and hide, right? <laughs> that season, okay? So the, Jesus said that season is gone. Now flowers are blossoming, all right? It's the, the sun coming up. Jesus, the son of righteousness, has risen in your life, Rebecca. You can rise up without condemnation, without guilt, without fear, without insecurities anymore. And he says, and he left, Jesus left it bright with blossoming flowers. The season for singing and pruning the vines has arrived. Whoa. <laughs> Why I say whoa? Because I certainly feel all the anointing. Okay. I hear the cooing of doves in our land, Jemima, filling the air with songs, awaken you and guide you forth. The Lord Holy Spirit is filling us with his presence, with his anointing, with new songs, right? Songs, Hebrew songs, English songs, but that are work that brings down the presence of God as well as Wakening us. Anyone sleep, dry bones all wake up. <laughs> right? The presence of God, that's how wonderful it is. To guide you forth. Anyone who is half asleep will get up <laughs> because Holy Spirit fall upon them. <laughs> okay, Not, not uh, somebody fall upon you, right? <laughs> Holy Spirit fall upon you. These flowers may point to the holy lovers of God throughout the ages, which after the rains, right? He said, I will pour out the latter rain. Isn't it? The prophecy in Joel. He will pour out the latter rain, which has already been poured out on the day of Pentecost. And uh, in book of Acts, and it's continued to pour out. Hey, imagine no rain, very dry. That's why Christians who just have the word, but no 
Holy Spirit are very dry. No rain. Dry. You know, dry. <clears throat> dry. <laughs> the rains of the Holy Spirit will mature, blossom, and give forth the fragrance of Christ. Holy Spirit come to bring life to the word. Suddenly the word becomes alive. That's revelation. Revelation comes from Holy Spirit. Yeah, because the Holy Spirit comes to reveal the word, to reveal Christ, to mature, to blossom you and give you the fragrance of Christ. No more head knowledge, but revelation knowledge and comes from the Holy Spirit. Paul was a flower. Ah, you never describe a man as a flower, right? So now we can say Elijah is a flower. <laughs> Piara is a flower. Okay. Paul was a flower. Peter was a flower. Flower means life, blossoming, beautiful. Okay, because rain has come upon you. See a flower that is withered, and then you just have rain, boop, the flower blossom again if it has not uh, disappeared. Right? You just need rain. So you are a flower, but fading away or you know, withered a bit. Just put rain, put water, and where is the rain? It's the Holy Spirit. That's why you see Elsa blossom after the anointing, the fire came upon her. Right? The rain came. Oh, she got water, one big drop. <laughs> she said, That's why she's so refreshed. All right? Under the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, He's going to water us. He's going to rain more and more. Wonderful things are happening. You become that flower that will continue to blossom. Peter was a, was a flower. Mary of Bethany was a flower blooming. I think, is it this year, right? The, the, the Lord, or last year, it's not thought about the blossoming, right? You will all blossom like flowers, all more and more beautiful. You may not see yourself physically beautiful, but people can see the spiritual blossoming into your physical, through you, through your physical. The sons of God are the flowers appearing on the earth out of their union with Christ. So beautiful. Flowers to blossom need rain and need sun. We need the Holy Spirit, the rain, and we need the Son, Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, of, on you all the time. Whoa, all the beautiful. Are you all flowers here that are blossoming, not withered one? <laughs> blossoming one, amen? With lots of rain and water and sunshine. And your flower need to be, have got root, have got inside a plant, and then have roots that are rooted deeply in the love. Of Jesus. Can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you? That's the the, the, the bright room talking, Jesus. All the brides and the lovers of Jesus. He's saying, can you cannot discern? Can you discern? Can you see that it's a new day or are we still living in the past? No, after hearing the good news, keep on hearing the word of God. He says there's a new day of destiny. It's all around us. The early signs of my purposes, our plans are bursting forth. And this prophecy is somehow in the Old Testament. Today, we have so many prophecies already. Israel has already blossomed, right? The prophecy, they say, when you see the fig tree, Jesus said, when you see the fig tree blossom, which is Israel coming together and blossoming, prospering, you know that the day is at hand, second coming. And now we have much more than that. The new creation, Jesus came already. This is the time before Jesus come, prophecy. And Jesus already came, right? The lily of the valleys, the rose of Sharon already came, died for us. And now Israel has become a nation in 1948. Blossom, the fig tree, always speak of Israel. The prophecy has already come to pass. Now we are looking towards the next prophecy to happen, which is the second coming and before that, the rapture. Yeah. So now, can you see the signs? If I put it to today, right? All that uh, Solomon, uh, the prophecy here, a lot has already happened. But today, are you going to be that flower that is blooming with new life? That we are going to usher in. We won't be here at the second coming, but we will be ushering in. We will be like John the Baptist with the camel wearing camel hair. That's another revelation. But today, we are proclaiming the second coming of Jesus, coming as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, coming for his children Israel. But for us Gentiles, still the dispensation of grace, undeserved favor, or the grace of God, which is 
for us Gentiles who are with, were without promise, without covenant, without God. Yeah, but because of God's love for us, today we come to hear the wonderful good news and we can be born again and we can be part of that rapture when Christ come for his church. And for the next second coming, what will happen to us? We will have the marriage supper of the Lamb first, seven years on this earth while we have a few seconds there. And then we will be coming with Jesus. Oh, the church, those who believe in him, right? The redeem of the Lord. Serving him, if you add him, will be better. Yeah. Then we come with him to rule here. First, we rule over our five senses. <laughs> then you can reign over cities, right? <clears throat> there is a new life budding and now blooming everywhere. Here, I can see all of you are blooming, budding from day one. <laughs> day one, no bloom. <laughs> but today, look at Abigail, blooming, smiling. Uh, Elijah, Rachel, Joseph, Elsa, Hannah, Cheng Lan, Rebecca, Piara. <laughs> Who else here? Magdalene, Ruth, Evelyn. Selling, blooming, blooming. You not see it yet? Don't worry, it's happening. All right. And Amos says what? Amos nine, the prophecy for beauty for ashes is going to happen so far. In one and a half years, you already see the blooming of all your lives, right? And there's much, much more. Okay. So the new now blooming everywhere. So not here only, but all over the place where there is. The word and there is the Holy Spirit, the rain. All right, because the flower cannot bloom without rain. And without the word of grace, the sun, the word of righteousness, I would rather say rather than the word of grace. Word of righteousness, righteousness includes grace. Right? Righteousness is a sun of righteousness, is rising upon you, Rebecca. It's rising upon you, Ching Lan. So this. With the Son of Righteousness, Jesus is the Word of Righteousness. From righteousness, we will understand grace because it's His righteousness. How can there be grace if you don't? How can there be righteous uh, grace if we don't understand His righteousness? All right, it will all be self-effort. People think that there's a message of grace and they are still looking at themselves. That's not grace. Grace is totally no more looking at self and looking at what he has done and standing in his righteousness, blossoming in his righteousness, that is grace, right? And then having the Holy Spirit pour on you, more drops of water on Elsa, more joy and laughter on Rebecca, on each and every one of you. That's the rain. Each time you receive the anointing and you laugh or, or feel the fire, it is the rain, the rain that was prophesied by Prophet Joel in the last days, the latter rain will be greater than the former, changing, causing the flowers to bloom. What's it for? Why, why the anointing? Because you need to bloom. God wants you to bloom to become like the banner, the flower. You know, you, when you pass by a beautiful flower, you will look at it, right? <laughs> you pass by a, a wilted flower, you don't look one. So people will begin to look at you, not because of the glory, your own self, but there is a different glory. There's a shining glory of God on your face, Rebecca, when you laugh under the anointing. Whoa, we should take more videos. She's so full of glory. Agree or not? <laughs> but some of you are also on the floor together with her. All of you, right, are so full of glory when you're lying down there, all right, under the anointing. They're shining so bright in his glory the glorious victory now is having this anointing all right to overcome your life so that you as a flower will begin to bloom even more brighter there is the fragrance of their flowers whisper that there is a change in the air things are changing arise my love my beautiful companion run with me yeah, I just saw all this again, right? But before that, remember the, that day, the Sunday's uh, teaching or sermon, arise and run. 
the gimel is chasing you. <laughs> or gimel, right? Come, run, run to the higher place. Don't go down, go up to his presence. Jesus is up. Heaven, Abba Father is up, right? We are seated in up, heavenly places, spiritually, right? For now is the time to arise, not tomorrow, day after now, now, and come away with him. Don't postpone your time with the Lord. Yeah, the text is literally translated. The fig tree has sweetened and put forth its early figs. In the language of allegory, the fig tree is a picture of destiny and purpose. The sign of a fig tree blooming is a sign of early spring, a new season. When Israel become a nation, and when Jesus said, when this fig tree blossom, yeah, you know that the time, the end is near. One generation then starting of another generation of a new season. That, that's why Israel already became a nation. Now we are after that prophecy fulfilled. We are nearing the second, the end times or the end of the end. It's a new season of the glory of God, of the latter rain, of the Holy Spirit outpouring more and more onto his sons and daughters who will rise up with gifts, prophesying, prophecy with word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and who will have a communion with their Lord and Savior and no more and come under this banner of love. No more fear because the main thing that love does, agape love or ahavas love, is take away fear. Remove fear. Fear, fear can be anything but it's devastating, right? But once that fear is removed, fear of lack, fear of losing things or losing people or whatever. All these fears, fears of in, fear of insecurity, fear, all these fears removed. How does it remove from agape, from the knowing the love of Abba? For you are my love, hidden in the split open rock. It was I who took you and hid you up high in the secret stairway of the sky. Wow, very poetic. Let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. And have you heard the sweet voice of our lover Jesus? Sweet voice is not, hey, you, <laughs> better behave, better be a better Christian. <laughs> That's not sweet voice. <laughs> okay, Jesus don't talk to you like that, okay? Jesus said, I love you. Jesus said he loves you, Elijah. You are already made good. You are already made holy. You are already a beautiful flower. Now go out. <laughs> go out, his darling. Hurry up. <laughs> but he speaks sweet to you, right? Encouraging you, giving you the strength and the power, all right, to serve him with joy. Hear his sweet voice. See his radiant face is shining upon you. He does not condemn you, but he, sometimes he corrects. That's all. All right. So because we don't, we don't, he don't correct us, then he's not treating us like a father, right? How beautiful your eyes of worship and lovely your voice in prayer. When you pray to him, do you hear him talking back to you? <laughs> or we just, daddy, go, 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 go. I need this, I need that, I need that. No, he wants to talk to you also. He said, I already provided. Actually, his answer is, I already given to you. <laughs> I have already answered you. Turn to uh, Philippians 4.13. <laughs> so that's his answer. Okay, so don't to God. Go, he will tell you which verse to go to, which word. Uh, Holy Spirit will prompt you. Sometimes a lot of, why you remember Pastor Stephanie or Deborah uh, tell you a lot of things? Because of the scriptures that I give, you, you probably don't remember a lot of things that I say, but you can remember scripture because I always give you scripture. I always give you Bible so that these are the words of Jesus and you remember them. Yeah, you remember this Jesus said, God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Yeah. Sometimes because everything can pass away. Even my words can pass away. If it's not the word of God. But God's word will never pass away. That's why I encourage you to put his word. And what you have, the most beautiful thing that you can give to another person, yeah, is the word of God. All right? The Bible containing the word of God. Right? As you speak God's word to someone else, it may not be exactly quoted like that, like that, word for word. Doesn't matter. Something like that. 
it's good enough the word that for God so loved you that he gave his son. Okay, you may not be able to put it all together, right? But the more you meditate, the more word will come out of you. This is the most priceless gift to someone. You want everlasting one? People want to receive present that is good, that is lasting. <laughs> what, what else? Eh? Uh, valuable, got value, can last forever, can what, uh, what? Beautiful, the word of God. Everything can decay one, but God's word will never decay. Give them the word of God and then give them some rain. Pray for them and release the showers of blessing, the anointing upon their life. You must catch the troubling foxes, those sly little foxes that hinder our relationship for they raid our budding vineyard of love to ruin what I planted within you. Will you catch them and remove them for me? We will do it together. So what are these foxes? These foxes are the compromises that are hidden deep in our hearts. These are the areas of our lives where we have not yet allowed the victory of Christ to shine. The foxes keep the fruit of his spirit from growing within us. So the foxes is like the devil, all right? All trying whispers of the devil. That's why I don't have conversation with the devil too much. Sometimes when we sit down and then well, all the thoughts come, the thoughts of the past and all the condemnation thoughts or whatever thoughts will come. Why want to? Those are the foxes, all right? Come in where? In your mind to tell you, to put you fear again, all right? And they are deep there, can be hidden there. So the areas of our lives where we did not allow the victory, which is a victory of Christ to shine. How you allow the victory of Christ? Take the word of God and then apply it there. When he says, no, Hannah, you are not good enough. Then you take the word, allow the victory of Christ to shine by saying that God has not given me the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. God has not given me a bondage, the spirit of bondage to uh, back into religious duty. All right, so use that and then the word of God will shine because Jesus shines, right? The sun, use the word over the fox. So then you say, oh, keep the fruit of his spirit from growing within us. Why the fruit cannot come out? <laughs> the fruit of self-control, of us, discipline, the fruit of patience, right? How? Meditate on the word. God says that. When my word abide, Jesus said, when my word abide, your abide in you and you abide in me, you can do. There's nothing you cannot do. All right? You will bear the fruit of the Spirit. So with the word, my beloved is mine, I'm his, he fits among the lilies. <clears throat> so Romans 8.37, yet in the midst of all these things, that means all these problems in life, and we triumph over one of them. We triumph over them all. Triumph means we have victory, right? Remember, Jehovah Nisi means Jehovah, our banner, it is victory, all right? Our, or you can say our victory. And this is the year of victory. Don't go past 2023, still after December 2023, still fearful, still defeated, still living under all the, fears and all that no this year is a year of victory over first of all yourself all right over the old man over the old person triumph arise up that's why it's about rising up about being the flag the, there are two flags right the one is you carry the wave the flag and say defeated <laughs> white flag you the people who come up using white flag what they come up from where hiding right they are so scared that the enemy will eat them up or will bomb them. Then they take out the flag and wave a little flag and then say, we surrender. Don't surrender to the devil. Get out from the hiding place and carry your banner of victory in Christ. You say that he, in the midst of all the enemies, in the midst of so-called trials or problems that you seem to be very big or giant. Jesus said, Paul said, that in the midst of all this, we in Christ has already triumphed. We already have won the victory in Christ. For God has made us to be more than conquerors. He already defeated the enemy, defeated your, your, your emotion of fear. It's gone if you allow your mind to think 
the way God thinks and start building your spirit man, meditating on God's word. Just meditate on this word alone is already so powerful. God has made me to be more or made us to be more than conquerors. Conquer what? <laughs> okay. If that means there is something to conquer. That's why Jesus said, in this world, you will have trials. There will be problems. There will come a day. There'll be no more problems when we go to heaven. Right. But before that day comes, that on this earth, there will be all when we have rapture. Right? But he said, don't be afraid because I have conquered. All right, be of good cheer. Not actually, it's not even don't be afraid. Is it be of good cheer? You can be rejoicing, you can be happy. Cheer means whoo, happy, right? That's what Paul says. Rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. This is a year of great victory and rejoicing. And the Lord helped us to rejoice by pouring the rain of the laughter, the joy of the Holy Spirit. You are more than conqueror because He has conquered. And he's given you the victory. And he's demonstrated. It's in the spirit. So the thing is, we declare first the way of pay gimel. Take the word of God. Declare your victory first before you see it manifested. Don't say, I wait first until no problems all no more. No. Faith is substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen, not yet manifested into the natural realm or the physical realm. So this is how we do it, we declare victory first. That's why we come together and we say, thank you, Lord. Yes, you are more than conquerors. That means you are declaring your faith in Christ that has already solved the problem for you. All right. And how? We are more than conquerors and His, God has made us and His demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything, every problem in life. What is demonstrated love? If the devil point at you and say, look at you, your situation is still like that. Then you point him to where? To the cross. <laughs> okay, yes, to the cross where Jesus died. To Jesus means to the judgment. Jesus was judged at the cross for your sin and my sin, so that all these problems will not be overcome us. So that we, we, you know, when we fall, when we, uh, we are overcome by the devil, or when we lose a war, or when we fail, that means we are still living under judgment, right? Under punishment, under sin. Because sin results in all these things, failure, uh, weakness, uh, what else? Insecurity, fear, all that. So if we are still living in fear, that means we are still living under judgment. But when we point to the cross, we are no more under judgment because Jesus has been judged. Our sin has been judged. Paid the price. The price has been paid. Judge means poor. Okay? Death has been put onto Jesus, onto all our sins. And we died with him. So today, we, this demonstrated love, so it's not a love that is somewhere in the sky. It is demonstrated. Jesus was nailed to the cross, judged, paid the price of being put to death for you and out for me, for my sin. That is our glorious victory. So when the devil accuses you or come to tell you, no hope, ah, your case, sure, da, 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 all the bad things going to happen. Then what you say? No. Jesus demons, God's love was demonstrated. God's love for me was demonstrated on the cross in that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. Therefore, this is my glorious victory. I don't have to fight you devil anymore. I don't have to crack my head every day, cannot sleep over the problem. I rest in him Jesus, who has already overcome the victory for me. So that's why we can now rest in Him. Not rest in Him is not rest in Jesus and still don't know what He is doing. Where is He? It's resting in <laughs> His finished work. That means His demonstrated love. At the cross, He paid the price for us. Your sin was punished. Just remember that when we suffer worries, and all these pains of this life, 
and all that, we are suffering judgment of sin. And it has already been removed at the cross. The victory is to give you and me, Rebecca, Chengman, Elsa, all of you, the victory over worries, over fears, over all those things that are a result of sin. Clearly implied in the text with the Greek word, the love of God gives us a glorious, I like this uh, commentary, the love of God gives us a glorious hyper victory. Not just victory, hyper victory. More than conqueror, ma. <laughs> hyper, very big victory. If only we, you know, God open our eyes and see, whoa, the devil defeated. That problem is so small. I uh, leave it to God to handle. But the thing is, when we trust in ourselves, we want our timing. We want to, it to happen now. God says his timing because God doesn't just want to do magic for us. He wants to build our faith in him, build our lives in him. Because you may have one day today solve the problem, but we don't have faith, have not built yet our faith. Tomorrow it can come again. <laughs> another one. The devil can throw another one at you and you don't know how to handle so God is not just here to, you know, do magic. He will, because his word promised that he will settle, he will help us win all the battles. But he wants to build our character. He wants to build you strong, selling as a woman of God. So he, how can we be strong as a woman of God? It's the building of our faith. Able to see things that he sees and building our whole personality, our whole character into the character of Christ. Right, it's a glorious hyper victory more than we can be described or contained in one word. God's love and grace has made us hyper conquerors. First time I heard, I see this beautiful, empowered to be un, unrivaled more than a match for any foe. Have you seen Jehovah Nissi, the one who battles, who has already won all the battle, and he has won the war, and he is your flag of victory and we just look at him first the flag that was raised and then after that we are the ones that God will raise up to show forth his victory every power the youth you see the youth is also in Nisi right it has the Samet it has the Nun which is the new life in Christ yeah we are all raised up to this new life new Nun right the spirit life okay then you have the Samet inside Nisi which is surrounded, protected by God himself and all the angels of heaven. And then you have the youth. Actually, there are two youths there, which is the powerful hand of God. So the powerful hand of God is supporting you, is holding you. What is there to fear anymore? The battle already won. No, no foe can overtake Jesus, overcome him, because he has overcome. May Yahweh, Psalms 20, 4-5, Give you every desire of your heart and carry out your every plan as you go to battle. Yeah. When you succeed, we will celebrate and shout for joy. Flags will fly when victory is yours. Yes, God will answer your prayers. <clears throat> and we will praise Him. Yahweh gives you because He's Abba. He is able, powerful, the youth. He's able to deliver what he promised. Because what? Corinthians say what? All the promises of God are yes and amen. That means behind the promise is someone who can deliver. Every desire of your heart. And today our heart is born again. God will only give us good desires. Desire to serve him. A desire to love him more. Okay? This is a good desire. A desire to preach the gospel. So he will give you. And carry out the plan as you go to battle. But the, someone who will try to kill that desire is the enemy. But the thing is, he has already given the victory. All right? From the word. That you, the, the, the devil cannot stop what God is doing in your life, Elsa. The devil cannot stop what God is doing in your life, Abigail. And every one of you. He cannot. He is defeated. He just whisper a bit, mumble a bit. <laughs> if you if you entertain that whisper, 
uh, then maybe he will cause you to worry and trouble. But if you know that you are victorious in Christ, hyper conqueror, hyper victorious, then who run? You run or he run? <laughs> devil run. Yeah, no more let the devil talk to you so much. Okay, Elijah Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you are more than a conqueror in Christ. So he runs and he says, when you succeed, not if you succeed, it is a guaranteed success that the Lord gives to each one of his sons and daughters. When you succeed, okay, when we dare to go face the Goliath, when we dare to go and face the Goliath with Jesus, our covenant God, our Jehovah Nisi, we dare to face the battle of our emotions and face it and overcome it through the word of God, face all those things in life that the devil throw at you, then what happened? When you succeed, we will celebrate. There is much celebration. That time of success comes when you meditate on the word of God. It says, you will surely succeed. Where have which army goes out to fight and knows 100% they will win. Only the army of the Lord. Only the army of Israelite army always go out fighting a bigger number enemy, a more powerful in the natural army. But yet they already go out when God tell them, you will have the victory before they go out. Only the army of Israel. All the others have to trust in their chariots, trust in their mighty men, trust in their armor, trust in their weapons. And then they're also not sure. Maybe 50-50 or 90-30, depending on the odds. But here we don't have odds against us. The, all the odds are for you. Jesus said, God is not against you, but for you. One chase you, one chase a, a, a put. A thousand, two put ten thousand to flight. Enemy come one way, he'll flee seven ways. We already declared winners. <clears throat> yes or not? <laughs> Why are you so scared? The devil you already declared a winner. You go to battle, you already go out of the door and you face all the things that we face. You declare yourself a winner in Christ. He says, flags will fly when victory is yours. The manifested victory will come. But first, we have the victory in the spirit. Which one comes first? The spirit first. If you see, like healing, all that you see in the spirit, you are healed, the manifestation takes place. You see, no more lack, the manifestation takes place. You see, the word of God says, you are already victorious and more than a conqueror then the manifestation takes place. The thing is, we don't see in the spirit because we don't see the word of God. That's why we're still living under defeat. Okay, so arise. If you're willing to arise, means you have seen it. You have seen the victory. That's why you get up. See in the spirit first. Okay, amen. So flex the Lord. All of, He is the flag, our banner. If you feel scared and at any time the emotion come again or fear, look at the flag. There's a flag here. Jehovah Nisi. Put one flag up there. <laughs> okay. That's why we look up at the cross. That's our flag. The cross is your flag. It's your sign. The banner is like a sign, right? So today you have the sign of uh, camel. You're born under which sign according to the Chinese? Uh, the dog, uh, not camel, sorry, the, the dog, the cat, and all that, uh, no cat, uh, dog, and uh, tiger, all that, right? Chinese one. But we are under the sign, the banner. Okay, so why Chinese, all that? Oh, did they say that, okay, you're born under Harimau or whatever, right? That means they're saying you're born under the star, the same as the horoscope, right? The star, a star of uh, whatever star, okay? What are stars are there? I only know one. <laughs> Capricorn or, or whatever, right? So that means it's a banner. It's up there. So the Chinese, they have different stars also. They have different animals. So what is that? There's the banner over there. Okay? That can uh, determine their character, determine their destiny, determine their life, supposedly. 
today we are redeemed from all that. We only have one more, one banner, one sign. Banner also means sign, right? The star is a sign. Those are signs. So what is our sign? We are born under which sign? Ah, uh, <laughs> sign of the cross, like that, right? The cross, the cross. The cross is our sign of victory over the enemy and over sin and over fear and over all that the enemy throw at you. Which sign are you? Which banner? The cross. <laughs> all of us were born under the cross, right? Because we are born again under what? Under the cross. Okay? But the, the physical cross has no power, okay? It's the spiritual cross where Jesus died on the cross and took your judgment of sin, guilt, condemnation, and punishment. And today, we are more than conquerors. Amen? So,